Welcome back! We've been through quite a lot lately, especially in the last video, but we've accomplished one of our major goals, and that is to get Emmett's uh, scientific career back on track. However, there are some obstacles in front of us that we've got to face. In order to make sure the future occurs as it should, Emmett needs to make a successful demonstration at this science expo. We need to face Edna in whatever scheme she probably has planned, and whatever Citizen Brown has planned now that he's abandoned us and betrayed us. Hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Uh, uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. I really wish that they would make up and uh, sort their differences out. You know, you really should try to work things out with your dad. If you give him a chance, he might just surprise you. I'll keep that under advisement. But first, I need you to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah, is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Uh-oh. What is Edna up to? Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Whoa! Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Ooh. Somehow I don't think that's his vehicle being out of control and almost running us over was an accident. Where have you been all night? I've been driving around, looking up old friends, thinking things over. Okay. So is that what I'm destined to build for the expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Oh? Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! No! Science did not make your life miserable. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. You can't do this, Doc. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. But we've already established this. Edna is not the one for you. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd he go? Where did Emmett go? Where'd he go? Also, they got a whole truck of the algae cakes here now. Regarding that last point, I don't really believe that it was just the science that Edna used. It was also Emmett's too. Oh, come on! This thing seems to have a mind of its own. Dear little static thingy. Alright. Oh, come on. Hmm. Looks like we're gonna need to climb this post here to get to it. 
And now we have to have a timing related thing. We gotta wait for it to slip over here. Gotcha! And thankfully that's not as bad as the rocket car thing. Although we kind of have a crash landing. Oh, I love this song. I really like this song. The future is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. Bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. Bravo, Trixie. I really like that song. It, it's really cool. Kind of reminds me of that Make Way for Tomorrow Today song from uh, Iron Man 2. At least I think it was Iron Man 2 at the Stark Expo. And uh, that song kind of reminded me of the song from Disney's uh, Carousel of Progress. Uh, I forgot what the title of that one was, but the two were rather similar in nature. But what can I say? I like songs about the future. Let's take a look around. This is probably my favorite part of the whole game, just because there's so much cool stuff here, and we finally get to go inside the high school. I guess it's kind of appropriate, considering that Marty's destiny was at stake at an event uh, that took place inside here, so it's rather appropriate that Doc's fate um, is at stake here as well. Uh-oh. Insert ticket to enter. It appears that we need some tickets in order to visit the attractions here. Well, maybe Artie can help with that, since he seems to be the one in charge. Hey, Artie, what do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure, but I was wondering. Where's Emmett, first of all? You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his booth? It's the tall one over there. Well, it doesn't seem like he's over there. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie your job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal-breaker. Yeah. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. Hmm. How did he pull it off, I wonder? See you around. Alright. I guess he didn't help with the tickets, but where's Emmett's, though? That seems to be the question of the hour. Who's this guy here? Excuse me, Mr. Dutot, Jacques Dutot, at your service. Can I get a ride? Can I get a ride in that bathosphere? Certainement, if you've got a ticket. Hmm, we don't really have a ticket. Jacques Dutot, famous diver. So you're some kind of celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following, yes. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less uh, uh, demanding. All right. See you around. Obviously, a reference to a uh, Jacques Cousteau. Let's see here. There's Edna and Officer Parker. I wonder what they're talking about. And here he comes, right on cue. Oh, no doubt boy. he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. What's going on here? What's she doing here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty, now. What? 
Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Why are they oh, blockading don't be it? So modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. Well, she certainly isn't wrong about that. But in the end, he made the choice, though. It took him a little while to get there. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. Uh -oh. I found out who Harry Callahan really is. And where he comes from. Oh no. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. What? Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo. Oh, man. Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. Yeah. She's been getting some clout in town. Ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Oh. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Hmm. Well, I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, where is he anyway? Yeah. Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh, you're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Yeah. This is getting more complicated all the time, isn't it? So it seems that Edna is seeking out revenge for what we did to young Emmett, and she knows that we had manipulated her in the end. This definitely complicates things quite significantly, especially now that Emmett seems to have disappeared. And somehow, in order to convince Officer Parker to believe us, we're gonna have to find something against Edna. But just, how are we going to do that? It's not like she's broken the law or anything, has she? Well, let's talk to Trixie. Hi, Trixie. That's Techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now, what can I do you for? Well, tell me about everything here. I haven't actually uh, seen anything yet. Mainly because we don't actually have a ticket, but... It would be nice to get the grand tour. So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. <laughs> you know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. Pretty much the only non-main attractions are, uh, well, I guess there's several. I was going to say just Emmett's thing and the algae cakes, but there's also this this structure here, and also the police thing over there that we saw in the background, and the clock in the middle, so I guess there's a bunch of things around here. So how do I get tickets? How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kinda like family now, you know? Aw. Thanks. We got unlimited tickets, virtually. That's cool. Thanks, Trixie. You seen Emmett around? I'm kinda worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Uh-oh. So it seems like older Doc, or Citizen Brown rather, has found young Emmett and is doing something with him. That does not bode well. Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. 
Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't. Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Well, it kind of is. Also, he is the last person on the list. I mean, it's not like they can move anybody around to make that better. What time is Emmett supposed to go on? Let's see, eight kilobeats past fifty. Uh, We're on metric time here at the Hill Valley Expo. Metric time, <laughs> okay. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Exactly. Seriously, you and I, we are in, on equal wavelength with that. Is there anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? <sighs> I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Well, you need to inspire Edna to open up that booth again. Okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. I like how there's uh, the the uh, speakeasy music in the background from the second episode. That's really cool. Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret. There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. He didn't tell you anything. Aw. Man, she's on to us. Come on, we need to know how she got that job back. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Ooh, man, she is tough. Okay, well... We'll find out somehow eventually, I'm sure. Thanks. Happy to help. Okay, so we've got tickets now. Uh, let's take a look around here a little bit more. We got this phone booth thingy here. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Oh. So we can't actually call anybody with the phone booth. Okay. So I guess that, uh, that sequence of letters and numbers there is the, uh, the number for this phone, if we ever want to call it then. That's good to know. Let's see, we can't really do anything else here at the information booth, I don't I'm think. I'm glad Trixie got her old job back. I wonder how she managed it. Me too, Marty. Are you ready for picture radio? Picture radio? Are you ready for a picture radio? wonder if that's anything like MTV. What? But there's no way that's live, is there? I don't get it. Hmm. Let's check out this potted plant here. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? Yeah. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? Ah. It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tan and Speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. That's pretty cool. Although, I don't think Kid really talks to plants very much. He doesn't strike me as the type. Oh. Hello, Shmirnoff. Oh, come on, Edna. The Electro Pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. Yeah, you might not want to make a full-sized version of that. Let's see if we can talk to Officer Parker a little bit more. Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? Comrade Shmirnov, come to turn yourself in? In private? With pleasure. Let's try to persuade him. 
You've got to let Emmett demonstrate his invention. His whole future depends on it. I'd love to, kid, but Miss Strickland thinks it's dangerous. Unless you've got something on her, her word is pretty much law. Her word is pretty much law? Come on, Officer Parker, you're a policeman, you know what the law is. Any idea where Emmett is? Well, he was working over by his booth, but by the time Edna got done haranguing me, he was gone. I hope he comes back soon so we can get this mess cleared up. You know, why doesn't Officer Parker tell the Chief about how ridiculous Edna's being? I mean, he mentioned that the Chief just reads her column every day, but that's not equivalent to knowing her. I mean, if he told her the stories about how the Chief, or how Edna has been har harassing him, and all the crazy things she does, and how she has a few screws loose, well, maybe that won't change the Chief's mind, but you never know, right? What's a newly promoted detective like you doing hanging out in a science expo anyway? Are you kidding me? This is a great assignment! I get to sit around all day playing with nifty new crime-fighting gadgets, like this! What does that do? Hell if I know! I would like to be here at the expo all day. I don't know, I've always liked trade show type environments. I, I, I've always thought they were really cool. Since when does anyone in Hill Valley listen to what Edna has to say? Exactly. Ever since she helped take down Kid Tannen, she's had the mayor and the city council eating out of her hands. She didn't do anything. An idiot to ignore her, especially with my uh, alcohol-heavy background. Boy, I wish I could catch her jaywalking or something. I'd throw the book at her. Ooh. But you never catch a dame like that breaking the law, darn it. Yeah, that is a problem. You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? Well, unfortunately, these two options are in the future and we can't really prove them. Uh, or these two options, rather. And this isn't really a crime. I saw her whispering about something with Carl Sagan outside the expo yesterday. Do you know what they were whispering about? No, but she looked really guilty. I need something more solid than that, I'm afraid. Yeah. We'll find something, though. We've got to. You haven't seen Carl Sagan around here, have you? Nah. Isn't he still a wanted man? Nah. All those arson charges got dropped weeks ago. Judge Brown said there wasn't enough evidence for a trial. Alright. Well, that's, uh... That's good news. Although, it may not be in this case, just because we kind of want to find Carl Sagan... If only so that we could find Emmett. Thanks. I'll be back. Well, I hope so. You've got to get this albatross off my neck. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Come on, Edna. Seriously. Now, where? Act Let's... casual. He's coming back. You talk like I, I can't even hear you. I mean, come on. Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. What's this about? What'd you do with Emmett, Edna? What are you talking about? You're the one who's trying to ruin his life. Believe it or not, I'm the one trying to save it. Yeah. From what? From you, mostly. You really don't know where Emmett is? I haven't the foggiest. If he's smart, he's run far away from whatever dangerous shenanigans you talked him into perpetrating today. Shenanigans? So, let me get this straight. She thinks that I'm some radical from Russia or something, or from some foreign country. And she believes that of all the schemes I might want to try to hatch, it would be at some demonstration here at the expo. I mean, I can understand, you know, creating a bomb or something might be a possibility, but Emmett would know better. I mean, she knows Emmett well enough, and especially if she believes that we manipulated him, it just feels a little bit unlikely that she would just fall for something like, you know, we're going to stage some crazy thing here at the expo or threaten everybody or something like that. Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend Mr. Sagan told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. Well, Emmett doesn't want you back anyway. You don't really think Emmett's going to want you back after you crushed his heart and tried to stop his demonstration at the expo, do you? Not at first, no. But eventually, he'll realize I've got his best interests at heart, and he'll come running back to me like one of those dogs he loves so much. 
But you hate dogs. Yes, ironic, isn't it? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm concerned about, too. You know, for someone who is very, um, who has a very low opinion of me manipulating you guys, you sure seem rather intent on doing the same to him one day. Why'd you go and get Emmett's invention sealed up like that? I had no choice. Once Mr. Sagan told me about your attempts to radicalize my poor Emmett, I knew I had to stop him from going through with your dangerous invention. But it's his invention, and it's not dangerous. Okay, maybe it's a little dangerous, but only to him. That's for the authorities to decide. Well, then they need to see some proof, right? I mean, you just can't accept hearsay from someone saying it's dangerous without any proof. Any chance you could talk Parker into letting Emmett go ahead with his demonstration? None whatsoever. And as long as I'm here, that contraption of yours is grounded. Sure. Well, let's see if we can uh, convince her to tell us about something she's guilty of. I know your deep, dark secret. Secret? What secret? She sure seemed a little bit guilty there before she tried to put on a, a straight face. You know, what you were whispering about with Carl Sagan yesterday. You overheard? Sure I did. And you did a really lousy job at, uh, burying the body. Oh, you didn't hear a thing. What I was talking about with Carl Sagan is between me and Carl Sagan. Ah. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. I don't think he's very scared at all, to be honest. He seemed to have his own scheme. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Well, let them hear about it. It's not going to change what happens here. Why is Parker so willing to do your bidding? <laughs> well, the good detective knows that he owes his current rise through the ranks to my reporting on his behalf. Oh. He also knows that I could just as easily pen an expose about his previous nights of drunken debauchery and evidence tampering. You're blackmailing him? Reporters don't blackmail, Mr. Schmirnoff. We look out for the public interest. The public interest or your interest? Okay, this is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. We could easily say the same thing to you, Edna. Well, we'll continue exploring in the next video.